Israelites and the Egyptians were dependent on the presence of God. One group trusted God and walked through the ocean. The other group said, they did it, we can do it. Amen. Right? Amen. And the reason that they did it was because they trusted God, not because someone else was able to do it. So just because you did it in the past doesn't mean you can do it today. You have to pray today, and you have to have faith to conquer today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember the manna. They had manna, fresh manna, every day, right? What happens if you save it for tomorrow? It's moldy. It's nasty. It has worms. That's what it says in the Bible. You ever drink milk and it was rotten and you didn't know? Mm -hmm. That's got to be one of the worst things in the entire world, isn't it? Especially when you say, oh, some milk. And then your whole body, oh, you got to get it out of your mouth as fast as you can, right? And you think, oh man, I wish I would have known. But some people's faith is like that. It's rotten. And they don't realize that, that it's rotten until they go to use it and they find out there's no power, there's no anointing, right? And so if you want to have conquering faith, it has to be faith every day, every single time. You know, when I was in Indonesia one time, I was going to minister to this huge group of people. I think there was 15 people in a room. <laughs> 15 church planters in this room. And they were waiting for me. And I knew them. I had ministered to them before. And I was on the way there. And I was thinking, okay, I'm going to go. But I stopped outside the door. And I went over to the side. And I just began to pray for a few moments. And I said, Lord, make this a meeting that will impact their life forever. I told them, I can tell them everything. I told the Lord, I can tell them everything I know. And it won't change their life. But your presence will change their life. I said, let your presence be in this place today. And I went in and I started to preach and people started to cry. The, the power and the presence of God, the anointing of God was there. That's what we need every time. We need a dependence on God. Amen? Amen. If you want to be someone who continues to conquer, then you have to have conquering faith. And conquering faith is fresh faith for this new conquest. Every day that we're going to conquer, we need to pray like we never prayed before. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Never forget the element of faith when you're a conqueror. There is no system that will replace faith. God's anointing is not on G12. God's anointing are on the people who are doing G12. G12 does not conquer. People conquer. And we conquer by faith. And you cannot conquer without faith. Amen? Amen. When you do an encounter, an encounter is not a magical uh, deal that we just do it and everybody gets delivered. Right? What it is, is we go there with faith and with the presence of God and we minister to the people and it's the presence of God that sets the people free. And so we can never rely on a system. We always have to walk in faith. Amen? Amen. Tell the person next to you, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. He's talking to you. He's talking to everyone. One of the problems that the Israelites had is that they thought God was going to bless them because He blessed them last time. They didn't think that they needed to trust the Lord. They just thought, well, God did that last time, He'll do it again. And that's not how it works. We have to seek God every single time. Amen? Amen. Point number two. This is your favorite point. Encountering adversity. Encountering adversity. You don't have to like it. It'll happen. Right? Have you heard people say, don't pray for patience? There's no sense of praying for patience. You're going to get it anyway. Right? And the more you need, the more people will make you wait. In Exodus 15, verse 22 to 26, it says this. This is really good. It says, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled into the desert without finding water. How many days? Three days. Three days, okay. Now, this is interesting because they just went through the Red Sea. How many people think that would be cool? Man. I mean, if you go through the Red Sea, that's awesome, right? It's like, great, we're dead. Thanks, Moses. <laughs> here comes Pharaoh's army. army. We don't even have weapons. We're standing here. And Moses says, watch this. <laughs> Red Sea parts, and you go through. That would be cool, right? And when you get out on the other side... And Moses prays, and the sea closes and drowns the Egyptians. That's extra cool, right? <laughs> Not only was it cool that we made it through, but now we're partying while they're drowning. Whoa, drown! Yeah. There's that guy that used to whip my back. <laughs> you have, buddy. Right? So they're partying. I mean, it's awesome. They just saw this incredible miracle. Everything is 
so cool. And then, three days later, they came to Mara, and they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That's why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, what are we to drink? You know, they just saw one of the most incredible miracles that the world had ever experienced. And three days without water, they finally come to a place with water and they taste it, and the water's bitter, and they can't drink it. And the first thing they do is they start wondering why. God, you just delivered us from Egypt. You just brought us through the Red Sea. You conquered our enemies. Now we're three days without water. Why are the waters bitter? What's going on in my life? Shouldn't you be blessing me? And people think like that all the time, right? Not you guys, but other people, right? <laughs> bitter waters are circumstances that you have to face in life. Three million people were with Moses. They murmured. Can you imagine three million people complaining? Moses was the only one that was different. He prayed. Three million people complained. One person prayed. When you come into bitter waters in your life, do you complain or do you pray? Oh, you say pray. I'm going to ask your leader. I'm going to ask your spouse. You know, sometimes the simplest things we don't think that they're spiritual, but, but they are. I, I have a house that I rent out. Some people rent the house for me, so I have to take care of the house. I have to maintain it. Um, when I left and I was somewhere, I think I was in Columbia, I got an email that said, oh, the air conditioning broke in the house. Now, where I live, it's a lot hotter than here. You have to have air conditioning. It's not an option. People die without air conditioning where I live, really. People die from the heat. So I have to fix it, and I have to fix it right now. You know how much they told me it was? $1,700. I don't know about you, but I don't have $1,700 right here in my pocket. It's in those times that people complain. You know, that's not a big trial. It's a trial, but it's not a big trial. Sometimes in the little things, we immediately begin to complain. And people think, Lord, I'm serving you. Why is this happening to me? Or it could be something more serious. Maybe something happens in your family. Maybe when you were growing up, your parents got divorced or they left each other. And you start complaining, God, why is this happening? I'm serving you. Or maybe you're a Christian, you have a business and you lose your business. God, why would that happen? Or someone that's close to you dies. Or someone leaves the ministry. Or something bad happens in your city and you start to complain. The reality is, is that we can't murmur and complain. We have to trust in the Lord. We have to be people who pray. If we complain, it doesn't change anything. Did you know that? I used to be so negative. I used to be the most negative person alive. I'll tell you an awesome story. You'll like this. One time when I was 17 years old, that was like three years ago. <laughs> Twenty-three years ago, <laughs> when I was seventeen years old, um, we had a friend who owns a company, and a big, a big diesel, a big truck, it flipped on the side, and they had all these fifty-pound boxes of lard in this truck. Well, they can't stand the truck up with the load inside the truck because it'll tear the side out of the truck. So you have to take everything off of the truck, and then you stand the truck up. So they called me and said, "Hey, do you have any friends?" Bring your friends and come help us unload this truck and we'll pay you. Well, when you're 17, you always need money. So we go over there with a couple of my friends. Now remember, where I live, it's hot. Here we are at nighttime inside the back of this truck. And my dad's there with us. And we're getting these 50-pound boxes of lard. And we're just throwing them to the next guy like this. A whole, a giant truck full of these things. And we're throwing them. And they're so heavy. And it's so hot. And I'm, this is how I am. I said, Oh, man, it's so hot in here. Oh, I can't believe how hot it is. I'm sweating so much. I can't believe how... What?